Hey, everyone, it's the Drive to School podcast. Uh, thanks for joining me. I'm Pastor Goodman, the content executive here at Higher Things. And joining me today is Pastor Brad Meyer. How are you doing, Pastor? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. You get to be uh, the, the, the shaper of my mind. And you mentioned that you wanted to talk about something that I don't like. So we're going to do it. We're, we're going to talk about something called Pascal's Wager, which has always been something that's bothered me. Uh, so, so maybe you can convince me that I'm wrong. So uh, real quick uh, for, for our friends, what is Pascal's Wager? Just sort of like from a bird's eye, and then I'll tell you why I don't like it. All right. I was just going to ask you why you don't like it. So Pascal's Wager, uh, was came, a guy named Blaise Pascal came up with it. And you may have heard about him. He's one of the founders of calculus and he's more famous for that. And he was actually a philosopher as well. And he, he had a collection of writings that he was trying to work into a book and he died and it wasn't finished, but it's been published as his pen says, his thoughts. And so it's not really organized very well. It's kind of just a bunch of anecdotes that are slapped together, but this is in there. And so the wager is basically looking at the rationality of believing in God, whether or not God actually exists. Right. So, so he's trying to show that it's actually reasonable, that it makes sense. It's not irrational to have faith, even if it were the case that there was no such thing as God. So why don't you like it? So I, I don't like it because it sort of starts with this, like, well, if you believe and there's a God, you, you'll be saved. And if you don't believe, uh, and, but there is a God, you'll go to hell. So it's just a safer bet to believe in God, but that's only one God and there's lots of religions. So like, why not take the safer bet with um, like, I don't know, Odin and the ice giants, because like <laughs> I have yet to be attacked by an ice giant. So clearly things are working, right? Safe well, this bet. is, yeah, yeah. This is one of the problems with it, right? Is he never right. really finished this and developing it. So it's a little bit unformed yet. But the reason that I like it is it shows that it's actually, you know, because I don't take it to be in a proof of God. There's a lot of people who approach this as a proof for God. And that's where we run into that problem because it doesn't actually prove God. Just like when we went through the five, you know, proofs for God from Aquinas, they don't actually tell us like anything about who God is. Right. Other There's than no some vague stuff that he's the one that started everything. Right. He's a right. creator. It's about all we get out of that. That's and a I think God of power, but not a God of mercy. We need a Jesus. Right. Or a Jesus. Right. And I think this is the, the limit of looking for God philosophically. We end up with God the creator at best. That's the best that we can do is figure out that there's a God that made the world, which then, of course, brings us all kinds of problems. Well, I heard about this hornet one time that likes to lay eggs in the heads of certain kinds of ants, and then the larva eats them from the inside out. That's horrible. Clearly, the creator's horrible, right? So there's all these problems that come with that. But the reason I like the wager is it shows not the existence of God, which is where you were going but that right. it's actually rational to have faith in a God. Now, again, okay. it doesn't necessarily demonstrate the Christian God or anything like that. It just shows that it's not ridiculous to believe. And that's why I like it. Because a lot of people approach the idea that faith is so super irrational, so apart from reason, that it's ridiculous to have. It's irrational, right? And so you just shut your brain off and you just take everything at face value and you deny reality if something contradicts something you believe. And it becomes this whole subjective, you know, thing that I do to build up my own artificial world. And that's mm -hmm. how it's talked about both in and outside of the church a lot of the time. And right. uh, we forget that faith is something that actually corresponds to reality because we need to have faith in somebody that's real, the real God, the real savior, not a fake one. And this doesn't get at that, but it does show that there is a, a rationality to the idea that it's go okay to have faith in something. All right, let's, let's do it then. You, you were, you were going to draw me a pretty picture, right? Oh, my pictures are beautiful. They're, they're great. Can't wait. So this is, this is a, a, a very high tech and highfalutin drawing that I came up with. And so we have four possibilities here, right? We have um, the category of believing in God, the category of not believing in God. And then we have whether God exists or doesn't exist. And as we right. talked in the previous video, saying that God exists is a little bit of a false way of talking about God because he's beyond things like existence. But the English language is the English language and we have the words that we have. So unfortunately, it's the one that we have to do. So let's talk <laughs> through these categories, right? So right. if there is God and you believe in God and you act accordingly, you know, that God is real, right? And so we'll use Jesus just for the sake of discussion, but this works for just any, if any God exists, right? So if Jesus right. is real and you believe in him and your faith is credited to you as righteousness, that works out pretty good for you, doesn't it? Right. And, and you get to go to heaven and then that's great. So this is a good, go to good place. Yeah. One beautiful green circle there. I couldn't figure out how to make a check mark. So we get green circles. Okay. So if God exists and you don't believe in God, how does that work out for you? So, well, you know, say, say it's Zeus, right? And you, you don't yeah. worship Zeus at the temple. What happens to you if Zeus doesn't like you? Lightning bolts. Lightning bolts. It is a bad, bad deal. Oh, no, no, I can't change my color. Why is that not working? Oh, well, there we go. 
that's a bad deal, right? And so you get a red circle because it doesn't work out very well for you, right? right? Okay. Well, let's pretend that God doesn't exist. So right. if you believe in God and God doesn't exist, how's that work out for you? I mean, I guess maybe you could have a little bit less fun if your God has a lot of morals. Um, go that way. Well, so, you might have less fun, but you tend to live your life as if there's something beyond yourself. Right. You tend you to be more hope, selfless. You can, comfort, you can have beauty. I, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. it, it tends to work out better for society if you act like there's something beyond you and your own needs. Sure. Okay. You know, so on the whole, even though you may have to give up on some pleasures of the flesh that you might like, on the whole, you're going to be a better person to be a neighbor around, right? You're going to, I want to want you to live next door to me, even if God doesn't exist, because you're going to be a better person. You're going to be so more like moral. Mormons. I actually, I love having Mormon neighbors because they're actually really nice. Oh, they're fantastic. And the more workspace your religion is, the better of a neighbor you're going to be, by the way. So, so, you know, it generally <laughs> works out better if you believe in God. And even if God doesn't exist, because, hey, you're going to be a nice guy to live next to. You're going to take care of me, at least possibly. And at the very least, you're going to have a standard of morals that you don't want to break because that will make your God upset with you, right? Right, fair enough. So if God doesn't exist and you don't believe your God in God and you live accordingly, how's that work out for you? Um, well, it could be good or it could be bad depending on, you know, how how you conduct your life. So this is kind of a mixed bag over here. So right. I, I mean, but even if you want to sort of hang on to just sort of society tends to go better with these basic moral principles. Um, if, if there's any sort of tenets to it um, and, and you're rejecting, like, is it just that you can come up with these tenets apart from that, which is maybe another discussion uh, or, or that, you know, maybe an active rejection of all tenets of all religions is a good thing. Well, that's going to actually do a lot of harm to society. I, I could even maybe say, yeah, that, that, that might be bad. Right. And that's why it's kind of a mixed bag because it really depends on the person. You know, some people are going to, I mean, like Paul says, you know, the law is written on our hearts. Some people are still going to realize murder is bad and not murder. You know, I've still met and a then, lot of really kind atheists, though. So, yeah. I right. Agree and, you know, they're, <laughs> yeah, you can meet kind atheists. And, and their reason that their view of kindness and charity is what it is, is because they grew up in a society that's been formed by Christian values. Charity right. is not an innate thing to us. You know, there's a reason like uh, why church here, we're on the one year lectionary. And last week we had the Good Samaritan. And, you know, the Good Samaritan starts out with this, this parable of mercy about who the neighbor is. And uh, at the end of it, Jesus says, go do likewise, because he's connecting that how you know, he's pointing to how he's going to show mercy, you know, because the Samaritan shows mercy. This unexpected guy shows mercy, takes care of guy, pays his debts. It sounds very Jesus-y, right? And, um, and then at the end, he says, you go do likewise, because mercy comes from being shown mercy. It isn't natural. Like, I can reason from nature that murdering people is bad, and I probably shouldn't do that. I can't reason from nature that I should take care of my neighbor who's broke his leg and can't go to work. Right. You have to start but, making a really long-term humanistic approach where, you know, like you can look like four steps down the road to, well, society would, I guess, benefit if he can eventually get back to work, but maybe, or maybe he'd be better off if you just let him die somewhere. You right. Know, if, if he can't work, he's sucking the resources, you know? Fair enough. But anyway, so the reason I like Pascal's wager is, again, it doesn't prove God and it doesn't even prove Christianity. It just shows you're not ridiculous if you believe in, you know, religion, which I think Fair is enough. a useful tool in our modern world because religion is routinely made fun of. You know, if you believe this stuff, clearly there's no reason behind it. And I think that this is useful to show that, no, actually, it does make sense that there is a rationality to it. And now it's not an airtight thing, as we, you've already pointed out. And I get why you don't like it. A lot of people don't for that reason. But I like it because it does show that, you know, hey, I have a faith. I believe in Jesus and I'm not a stupid person for doing that. It is actually a rationality to it. It makes sense. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, I'll, I'll buy it. Well, uh, thanks. Yeah. I uh, have something new to think about with uh, Pascal and uh, hopefully if you have never heard of it, it's, it's a lot new to think about. So Pastor Bradmeyer, thank you for joining us today. You're very welcome. Hey, have a good one. You too.